You know, the next thing you hear are people talking about putting surface to air missiles on top of buildings to prevent this kind of thing. This is a very rare event. It's unlikely to be repeated, but and I think President Bush put his finger on it. We have to find who did this and any country any nation in the world that is in any way involved and responsible that turns out to be terrorism will require a response from the United States, and the United States has got to be willing to pay that price. Mr. Johnson, obviously we were completely stunned when about 25 minutes after the first explosion or for the, after the first plane crashed into one of the Twin Towers, another very large plane did the same thing, right. and we've been talking with our correspondents all, all morning about sort of if another incident could happen on the heels of these two, what kind of measures are in place to prepare for something else that could conceivably happen? Well, I think one of the steps is already being taken. I was, I was at National Airport getting ready to fly to LaGuardia when this occurred. Uh, they have shut down air traffic going in and out of the cities. Now, apart from shutting down the air traffic, you're, you're talking about an enormous disruption uh, economically for the for the nation right now with with the air traffic not going in and people are going to they're going to err on the side of caution i think uh, across the board you're going to look at major you know the major hubs in the united states where there are large buildings chicago uh, atlanta los angeles and there are going to be uh, you know, uh, extra measures taken but uh, you know one one possibility is you could start putting up air cover and require that planes stay within a particular area and do not approach any closer. And if they, clo you know, if they approach, uh, you, you would put, you know, go to the extremes of having the U.S. Air Force intercept. Larry, I wanted to ask you, you know, all morning that correspondents have, all, have also been saying, particularly Bob Kerr and Jim McLeishevsky, that there was no, and Andrea Mitchell, no warning attached to this event. Right. Uh, generally speaking, do we get some kind of, do U.S. officials, uh, government agencies get some kind of warning uh, from a particular group, or is this pretty, I mean, this, fairly this, typical in terms of an event happening without any foreshadowing? No, Katie, this is, this unfortunately is typical. It's only in the movies that you get the advanced warnings. You know, you look at every major terrorist incident against the United States, whether you're talking Pan Am 103, the World Trade Center, the USS Cole bombing, mm -hmm. the bombing in Dahran, Saudi Arabia. Okay. Rarely do you get an advance notice. Larry, I'm sorry to interrupt That's you, okay. but Jim McLeishevsky has some new information at the Pentagon. I hope you'll stand by and continue to talk with us. Mick? Katie, I don't want to alarm anybody right now, but apparently there, it, it felt just a few moments ago like there was an explosion of some kind here at the Pentagon. Uh, we're on the E-ring of the Pentagon. Uh, we have a window that faces out toward the Potomac, toward the Kennedy Center. We haven't been able to see or, or hear anything after the initial blast. I just stepped out in the hallway. Security guards were hurting people out of the building. And I saw just a moment ago as I looked outside, a number of construction workers who have been working here have taken flight. They're running as far away from the building as they can right now. Uh, I, I, I hear no sirens going off in the building. I see no smoke. But the building shook for just a couple of seconds. The windows rattled, and uh, security personnel are doing what they can momentarily to clear this part of the building. Again, uh, I have no idea whether it was part of the construction work, uh, whether it was an accident, or what is going on. We're going to try to find those details and get them to you as soon as possible. Uh, but interestingly enough, uh, one intelligence official here in the building said when he saw what appeared to be the coordinated attack on the World Trade Center, his advice was to stay away from the outside of the building today just in case. Now again, nobody has any indications uh, of exactly what happened, but it appears that there has been some kind of, it felt like a small blast of some kind. Again, the window shook, uh, the, the building shook, the windows rattled, and people, if uh, I'm looking out the window now, and, uh, and the construction workers are still keeping a good, oh, I'm sorry. The construction workers are still keeping a distance. That's all I can see. Uh, and I see no other extracurricular security activity right outside. But to get more information, I'm going to have to break away and, and walk down the hallway okay. and see what it is exactly that happened here see, just a few moments ago. Mick, see what you can find out. Please be careful and let us know what's going on there. Meanwhile, we're going to go back to David Gregory, who is in Longboat Key, Florida, where President Bush 
was earlier this morning for an event on literacy. He was going to a school to talk with kids. Uh, David, what can you tell us? A little bit more about how all of this unfolded and what the president is going to do next. Uh, the president declared this an apparent terrorist act. Uh, he, he offered a prayer for the families, promised to hunt down, in his words, the people responsible for this. Uh, he will now travel back to Washington, and aides are telling us now that he will immediately convene a national security meeting to see what steps are taken next. De David, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. we're looking at live pictures of the Pentagon where there is billowing smoke. Mick, Jim Miklaszewski just reported that he heard okay. a, an explosion, and right now we're looking at an aerial view of the Pentagon. Mick, can you talk to us? Uh, officially, nobody knows exactly what happened. I think the picture is pretty clear. According to one U.S. Army officer who went running past me at a full trot, he said that uh, it appears that a bomb was detonated uh, at the heliport. The heliport is a helicopter landing area right next to the uh, Pentagon, uh, just adjacent to the E-ring. Uh, the offices nearest the, the, uh, the uh, heliport area uh, our U.S. Army uh, Reserve uh, officers uh, and, and the Army Reserve, uh, our offices are located there. Uh, but as you can see, it appears to be uh, a pretty significant blast. Uh, to give you some perspective, we are almost on the opposite side of the building, the world's largest office building. And as I reported to you, we could feel the building shake and the windows rattle. And as I was in the hallway just a few moments ago, uh, I could smell uh, uh, an acrid kind of smoke, uh, the kind of almost what you'd smell uh, when a uh, fluorescent light goes bad, that kind of ballast smell. Uh, and uh, authorities are clearing the building. I don't know if you can hear the sirens outside right now, uh, but uh, it appears uh, that in what ha I think people uh, here in the building are already describing as a highly sophisticated, coordinated attack, not only against the World Trade Center, uh, but against the, the Pentagon and U.S. military right here in Washington. Tell me again, I, I, I worked at the Pentagon as well, and, and I, it is a huge building. I mean, it's miles and miles of, of offices. At what location did this seem to have uh, detonated? It's at the, it's at the heliport, the uh, heliport, which is... Uh, as, as, you, as you sit in the Pentagon, you have the Potomac River and Washington, D.C. on one side, and the heliport is located almost exactly on the opposite side of the building, along one of the highways. Easily accessible, uh, even though that they've increased security here significantly at the Pentagon within the past couple of years, Mick, uh, that area... I want to mention to you, Mick, that we are hearing, again, unconfirmed reports that this was the result of a plane crashing in the area as well. I have no idea, Katie. Uh, all I know is that uh, of people who were in the building who came running from that part of the building thought it was a bomb of some kind. Uh, it, it, according to uh, uh, Chris Brown, my colleague who just came in, it appears that uh, whatever it was, and perhaps it was a plane, Katie, if those are the initial reports, crashed into uh, or the damage is on the roof of the building uh, at the heliport side of the Pentagon, which is just opposite of the Potomac River, as I just said. We're looking at the White House, uh, Mick, because we are learning, learning that there have been some evacuations from the White House. I'm assuming that everyone is being evacuated from the Pentagon? Uh, well, <laughs> nobody's given us the official word yet, uh, but uh, I think that's probably a safe bet. Uh, thank goodness that was a helicopter that just flew by. I'm just a little nervous right now when you hear aircraft go past. But uh, they have, uh, in fact, evacuated that portion of the building. Usually they have sirens that go off in the building alerting you to the fact that uh, it's time to get out. I haven't heard those yet, uh, but just judging by the pictures, uh, it's, it's clear that that part of the building uh, uh, that is not damaged, at least, has been evacuated. Like I said, 
in the hallway, uh, it was pandemonium. Uh -huh. People were rushing from their offices, rushing outside. And you're in your office fr at the Pentagon right now, Mick, reporting I, to us? I am in the office, but I'm at the opposite side of where this uh, crash occurred. All right, why don't you see if you can gather some more information. Please, again, be careful, Mick, and we're okay. going to go to Matt, who's going to be talking with Jamie Yangel. All right, yeah, Katie, thank you very much. I'm joined by Tom Brokaw, and we'll try and recap what's been going on all morning here on the East Coast and in Washington, D.C. in just a few moments. But we do want to go right now to NBC's or today's national correspondent, Jamie Gangel, with some more information. Jamie? Matt, I just want to tell you that U.S. intelligence sources are confirming the reports that one of the planes was a hijacked flight, an American flight, from Boston to Los Angeles. They are also now looking into what's going on at the Pentagon. They don't have any details, but they have now put government buildings uh, around the city of Washington on a heightened state of alert. I think part of that is happening formally, but obviously people are seeing what's going on and some people are leaving buildings as well simply because of the concern following these latest reports from the Pentagon. All right, Jamie, thank you very much. Again, joined by Tom Brokaw, and Katie's back with us now, too. Let's try and recap. It's 947 Eastern Time. Try and recap what's going on so far this morning, and the news is terrible. Just before 9 o'clock... At 8.42, actually. 8.42, a plane crashed into the right-hand tower of the World Trade Center, somewhat about three-quarters of the way up. You can see the smoke billowing from that point of the building. And then about 18 or 20 minutes later, a second plane, a large plane, we saw it actually on tape, hit the left-hand tower of the World Trade Center about halfway up. An enormous fireball on several sides of the building. People trying to be evacuated. There's the tape of the second plane hitting right there, even as people were trying to get out of the first building. We have confirmed reports now that there was one plane hijacked American Airlines Flight 11 from Boston to Los Angeles. And that is apparently one of the planes used in this crash. Uh, Matt, uh, there's a report on uh, Dubai television uh, that, in fact, the group claiming responsibility is the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine. This comes, ironically, on a day when the Israeli Foreign Minister Shimon Peres is scheduled to meet with Yasser Arafat. Of course, we've had the meeting in South Africa for the past several days in which the Palestinians were accusing the Israelis of racism. The United States vacated that meeting, but there hasn't been one specific incident. And the Israelis uh, vacated that meeting as well. And the well. Israelis vacated it as well, but there has not been one specific incident. It's also worth pointing out that terrorism also always has two prongs to it, the physical threat and now the psychological threat. This does seem to be surreal, but in fact it is real when you have an explosion of undetermined origin at the Pentagon the most conspicuous uh, symbol of American capitalism, the Twin Trade Towers here in New York, two deliberate attacks on those towers today, and we do not know for sure who is responsible. And the Capitol, by the way, the U.S. Capitol has been evacuated. There have been evacuations taking place at the White House. Needless to say, many people in the Pentagon have left that building at as well. Airports and here, in New by York. the way, in this building in Midtown New York, they have uh, asked a lot of people at 30 Rockefeller Plaza to leave. It's another high-rise Capitol building, which is... Uh, in New York, I came down the length of Manhattan, and a lot of people were simply unaware of what had happened uh, as you tuned in the radio, and then they began to get it. Uh, it's election day here in New York. Uh, Primary day. And what, what we have is something that most Americans thought could never occur. As Larry Johnson, a terrorist expert I just spoke with a few moments ago, the former deputy director of the State Department Office of Counterterrorism, claimed this is a first, that he had never heard or seen anything like it. He talked about back in 1993 a German plane being hijacked and there were fears when it was flown to New York that it might be crashed yeah, we into have, something. Now, we have, this is a major development. The Federal Aviation Administration has shut down all air traffic nationwide. This country has been immobilized by these terrorist attacks in terms of air travel today. And we don't know where it goes from here. We'll just ask that uh, you stay with us so that as we get hard information, we can share that with you. There's going to be a lot of speculation. The president has described this apparently as a terrorist attack. The FBI has confirmed that an American Airlines flight Boston to Los Angeles was hijacked. 
it's believed that that was the first plane that went into the Twin Trade Towers. Let's go to James Kallstrom, Tom, if we could, the former director of the FBI here in New York. Mr. Kallstrom, uh, I'm sure you've never seen anything like this. Do you have any information that might be helpful to us? Well, not particular information on this tragedy, but uh, certainly what an incredible tragedy. And, uh, you know, all of us in law enforcement and prior in law enforcement have, have talked for years, and the public has seen the hatred in the world. They've seen the bombing of the World Trade Center. They saw the conspiracy.